Good morning, Little Masters, and welcome to today's Tolkien Times. I'm the Man of the West, also from the Prancing Pony podcast. Now, we've been enjoying Tolkien's storytelling in the form of poetry from the Lay of Lathian for 10 weeks now, and we're back for more. Last week, we were in Canto 5 as things got tense between Thingol and his wannabe son-in-law. Today, we conclude Canto 5 as Thingol nearly loses it, Melian suggests he take a deep breath, and Baron is issued a challenge that no one thinks possible. No one but him. Silence then fell upon the hall. Like graven stone, there stood they all, save one who cast her eyes aground, and one who laughed with bitter sound. Dairon the piper leant there pale against a pillar, his fingers frail there touched a flute that whispered not. His eyes were dark, his heart was hot. Death is the guerdon thou hast earned, O base-born mortal, who hast learned in Morgoth's realm to spy and lurk like orcs that do his evil work. Death, echoed Dairon, fierce and low, but Luthien trembling gasped in woe. And death, said Thingol, thou shouldst taste, had I not sworn an oath in haste that blade nor chain thy flesh should mar. Yet captive bound by never a bar, unchained, unfettered shalt thou be, in lightless labyrinth endlessly that coils about my halls profound, by magic bewildered and enwound. There wandering in hopelessness thou shalt learn the power of Elvenus, that may not be. Lo, Baron spake, and through the king's words coldly break, what are thy mazes by a chain wherein the captive blind is slain? Twist not thy oaths, O elvish king, like faithless Morgoth, by this ring, the token of a lasting bond that Felagund of Nargothrond once swore in love to Barahir, who sheltered him with shield and spear and saved him from pursuing foe on northern battlefields long ago. Death thou canst give unearned to me, but names I will not take from thee, of baseborn spy or Morgoth's thrall. Are these the ways of Thingol's hall? Proud are the words, and all there turned, to see the jewels green that burned in Baron's ring. These elves had set as eyes of serpents twined that met beneath a golden crown of flowers, that one upholds and one devours, the badge Finarfin made of yore, and Felagund, his son, now bore. His anger was chilled, but little less, and dark thoughts Thingol did possess. Though Melian the Pale leant to his side and whispered, O king, forgo thy pride. Such is my counsel. Not by thee shall Baron be slain, for far and free from these deep halls his fate doth lead, yet wound with thine. O king, take heed. But Thingol looked on Luthien, Fairest of elves, unhappy men, children of little lords and kings, mortal and frail, these fading things. Shall they then look with love on thee? His heart within him thought. I see thy ring, he said, O mighty man. But to win the child of Melian, a father's deeds shall not avail, nor thy proud words at which I quail. A treasure dear I too desire, but rocks and steel and Morgoth's fire from all the powers of Elveness do keep the jewel I would possess. Yet bonds like these, I hear thee say, affright thee not. Now go thy way. Bring in thy hand one Silmaril from Morgoth's crown. Then, if she will, may Luthien set her hand in thine. Then shalt thou have this jewel of mine." Then Thingol's warriors, loud and long, they laughed, for wide renown in song had Feanor's gems o'er land and sea. The peerless Silmarils in three alone he made and kindled slow in the land of the Valar long ago. Three only, and in every one the light that was before the sun. And there on Tuna of their own might they shone like marvelous stars at night in elvish hordes before the moon, when Laurelin flowered, until Pirion's bloom yet lit the land beyond the shore, where the shadowy sea's last surges roar, ere Morgoth stole them, and the Noldor roam, seeking their glory, leaving their home, ere Feanor's sons in madness swore their dreadful oath, but now no more their beauty was seen, save shining clear in Morgoth's dungeons vast and drear. His iron crown they must adorn, and gleam above orcs and slaves forlorn, treasured in hell above all wealth, more than his eyes, and might nor stealth could touch them, or even gaze too long upon their glory, throng on throng of orcs with reddened scimitars encircled him, and mighty bars, and everlasting gates and walls who wore them now amidst his thralls. 
Then Baron laughed more loud than they, in bitterness, and thus did say, For little price do elven kings their daughters sell, for gems and rings and things of gold, if such thy will, thy bidding I will now fulfill. On Baron son of Barahir, thou hast not looked the last, I fear. Farewell, Tenuviel, starlet maiden. Ere the pale winter pass, snow-laden, I will return, not thee to buy with any jewel in elveness, but to find my love in loveliness, a flower that grows beneath the sky. Bowing before Melian and the king, he turned and thrust aside the ring of guards about him and was gone, and his footsteps faded one by one in the dark corridors. A guileful oath, thus Thingol swore, for he had both to blade and chain the flesh now doomed in Morgoth's dungeons, deep entombed of Beren, but now welling tears filled Luthien's eyes and hideous fears clutched at her heart. She looked away and later remembered that sad day where after she then no more sang. Then clear in the silence the cold words rang of Melian. Counsel cunning wise, O king, she said, yet if mine eyes lose not their power, twere well for thee that Baron failed his errantry, well for thee, but for thy child, a dark doom and a wandering wild. I sell not to men those whom I love, said Thingol, whom all things above I cherish. And if hope there were that Baron should ever living fair to the thousand caves once more, I swear he should not ever have seen the air or light of heaven's stars again. But Melian smiled, and there was pain, as a far knowledge in her eyes, for such is the sorrow of the wise. I'm not going to have any discussion this week. I think that reading really takes care of itself, and it was a little longer than usual. But please come back next time for First Stage Friday as Luthien sulks, Melian delivers some bad news, and Dairon ends up getting Luthien stuck in a tree. Now, I'll be getting back to Phantom Friday's next series, so if you'd like to join me on the show or you know somebody who does, please email barlaman at the prancingponypodcast.com and let us know. Please visit patreon.com slash Tolkien Times to learn how you can support the show, get an ad-free RSS feed, a monthly hangout, a bonus weekly episode, and more. And join me again tomorrow on today's Tolkien Times as we wrap up this week with the Wedding of the Age on Second Age Saturday. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Please follow or subscribe in your podcast apps and follow at Tolkien Times on social media. Finally, as Faramir says, go with the goodwill of all good men. <laughs>